Hi, Steve Savier with Audubon. We're at a residence in Montgomery Township, Pennsylvania today to witness a pretty rare occurrence. A bird that normally spends its life on the west coast has shown up in this backyard. And not just any bird, a hummingbird. Now on the east coast we have one species of hummingbird, the ruby-throated hummingbird. But every year a handful of these western birds show up, and when that happens, naturalist and author Scott Widensall is called into action to ban these birds. And that's why we're here today. I'm going to use a, a specialized pair of pliers. There's a little tiny precision milled hole in the, in the front that will open the band up into a C-shape to go around the leg. And then when I close it with the pliers, it'll form a perfect circle around the bird's leg. It weighs no more on the bird, thank you, than um, a man's wristwatch weighs on him. What's the normal range of this bird? This is coastal California. Wow. So this bird's a long way from home. Normally they go from coastal California down into western and central Mexico. But the thing about migration is that migration is genetic. It's genetically coded. They don't learn where they're going to migrate. They don't decide where to migrate. And you get some birds that are born with, with bad software. Mm -hmm. They go in the wrong direction. And four or five hundred years ago, this would have been a death trap for a hummingbird like that. It wouldn't have survived here in December. But now the climate's changed, the landscape's changed, there's feeders, there's plants. Um, you know, these birds, this bird is, well, the fact that he's an Allen's hummingbird, he may wind up down on the Gulf Coast for the winter. Um, he may very well go straight from here back to California mm -hmm. because their breeding season starts in January. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as his hormones start kicking wow. in here for his first breeding season, you know, he may, he may zoom right back across the continent again. And the idea of banning them is hopefully maybe somebody exactly. captures and it we've, in California. And we've, had, and we've had a number of cases, not with Allen's hummingbirds, but with Rufus hummingbirds that were banded in, in the east and the southeast that have been recaptured all the way back up in Alaska, up in the breeding range again. Wow, 4.43. That's an indication of how fat he is. That's a very heavy weight for a male hummingbird. He is, he is one plump little we're guy. We're talking about grams here, right? Yeah, 4. exactly. 4.4. And a, uh, you know, to put that in perspective, a penny is about 2.6 grams. Let's hit some record shots here. Oh, let's uh, let's let's get the the feeder out and see if we can give him a drink first. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. Wow. If there's any question about stress, that kind of dispels. Yeah, it right there. I know it's uh, it's it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to understand. I, I would not do that if it were me. But <laughs> Fill her up. Drink, 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 drink. So what I want you to do is just put your hand flat like that. Turn around this way. Mm -hmm. And just stay real still. If everybody else stays real still, he may sit there for a, oh, several seconds to a minute or so. Yeah, he just doesn't know he's free right now. Yeah. It's <laughs> cool. This is awesome. And then, and then we'll just do. <laughs> he's sitting up in the uh, tulip just tree. Here. Yep. Checking this out. Yep. You know, so we know these birds are making these trips. That's why I, I get frustrated when people say, oh, well, you have to take your feeder in because the bird will forget to migrate. This bird's already migrated 4,000 miles to get here. Um, this, it, knows, it knows what it's doing. It's doing what its, it's doing what its genes are telling it to do. And you know, that's a risky trip for a young bird like this. He's already beaten the odds. I mean, most young birds die before you know, they're a couple of months old. So, so he's already come a long distance and, 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 and live for a, a good long time, he's over that hump. If he can make it back to the breeding grounds and pass on those genes, you may have further generations of Allen's hummingbirds coming awesome. back to Pennsylvania. So and this is a trend that has increased yes. over the years where yes. more Western birds are showing up? Absolutely. Rufus hummingbirds, Allen's hummingbirds, Anna's hummingbird, Calliope hummingbirds. All of these birds are showing up in increasing numbers in the east. We're getting them here in Pennsylvania in mostly October and November. Um, most of these birds wind up down in the Gulf Coast region for the winter and then head back to the breeding grounds. And so, I mean, we're talking, I mean, this year we know of somewhere between 65 and 70 of these western hummingbirds that were seen in Pennsylvania. That's the tip of the iceberg. Well, as you can see, we've had a fantastic day here in Montgomery Township. An Allen's hummingbird, only the fourth record in the state of Pennsylvania. You know, your backyard can be a great place for birds, so include native plants, feeders, a source of water. You know, Scott was telling me that this bird still eats, in late November, 60 to 70 percent of its diet is insects. So be sure to create a bird habitat in your backyard. Thanks for being part of our discovery today.